In a previous video, we looked at the excellent Tandy 100 portable computer. Today, we look at its cousin. Hi, I'm Jacob with Tech Retrospective, and today we are looking at the NEC PC8201A, a very interesting early portable computer. Let's get into it. Now, the backstory for this device is a bit convoluted, so bear with me. Today's system is the NEC PC8201A. It's fundamentally the same thing as the classic Tandy 100. That's because both systems are based off of the specs and design of the Keotronic 85, made by Kyocera. The Kyocera model, which was only sold in Japan, was a pretty major flop. However, NEC, or Nippon Denki Kabushiki Gaisha, the leading player in the Japanese computer market thanks to their popular PC8800 series of computers, decided to license the rights to the device. They sold a tweaked version labeled as the NEC PC8201 in Japan, which proved fairly successful. Then Tandy came along and licensed the hardware to be sold in their Radio Shack stores as the TRS-80 Model 100. This device sold incredibly well, thanks in part to Tandy's great marketing and distribution network. NEC saw the success of the Model 100 primarily in the US and decided to enter the Western market as well, tweaking the PC-8201 and renaming it the PC-8201A. That's the model we'll be talking about today. This system shares a lot of the same positives of the Tandy 100, like the stellar keyboard using Kyocera manufactured key switches, great battery life, and large 8-line 40-character screen. But there are some important differences. For one thing, each system has its own tweaks to the system registry. This means that software is not natively compatible between the two, though porting is very easy. Each system launched with different pre-installed software. Generally, they offered the same features, a simple word processor, basic programming, and modern support, but they each do so in slightly different ways. There are also some pretty interesting differences between the hardware of the two. One you have to be careful with is that they use different DC power standards, with the Tandy taking 6 volts and the NEC taking 8.5. One nice addition is an actual directional pad. It's nice to have, even if its position is a bit awkward to reach. But that's certainly better than the inline keys of the Tandy 100. You also have some interesting expansion options not available with the Tandy. Both offer ROM chip expansion for adding additional software, but the NEC adds a cartridge port for adding a battery backed up memory cartridge and a compartment for upgrading the system's internal RAM. Our system has been upgraded by the previous owner from the stock 16K to 32K of RAM. And actually, speaking of the previous owner, this system has a lot of history. We picked it up on eBay for $100, coming with all of the manuals and a nice carrying case. Not only was this system upgraded to 32K, but it also has a third-party ROM chip installed, adding the T-Word and Sardine package from Traveling Software Inc. and Random House Inc., adding a more robust word processor and a spell checker. The most drastic example of this system's patina is that the previous owner wrote all over the system and the manuals. Well, more specifically, it looks like their IT guy wrote reminder notes all over for the user who likely wasn't very tech literate. From what I can tell, the system was used to write up documents that would then be sent back to the office via the modem connection. As to what specifically they were writing, I have no idea since their data has long since been deleted from the unit. Some collectors would be really annoyed to have writing all over their system and immediately attack it with a magic eraser, but I like the historical flavor that is added, so it'll stay. On the top of the system, you'll see the fantastic keyboard, the function keys, and the large display. Of course, you'll also notice a ton of writing. On the right side, you'll see the power switch, contrast control, and the removable battery compartment. On the left side is the cartridge port. On the back is the DC power in, write protection switch, reset button, and the most serial parallel and communication ports I've ever seen on a small form factor portable. 
Unfortunately for NEC, the Western version of this system did not sell all that well. It may have been down to the price, but most likely it was just because NEC didn't have that major of a presence outside of Japan. Meanwhile, the Tandy model would continue to sell for years to come, seeing several revisions like the Tandy 200 and the Tandy 102. Overall, I think this system is pretty neat. If I was around at the time, I would probably have still chosen the Radio Shack model for its additional customer support and more widespread adoption, but both systems are really impressive portable computers from a time when portability usually meant making far more sacrifices. And now for the ratings. Usability, 5 out of 5. It's a system that was specifically sold on its usability and convenience. It's no surprise that both this and the Tandy model got perfect scores in this category. Rarity, 4 out of 5. The NEC 8201A is considerably more rare than any of Tandy's models. You can usually only find one or two on sale at any given time. If you're hunting for one, you might have to wait to find one in particularly good condition or a good deal. Price, 3 out of 5. In the world of obsolete portable computers, these are fairly pricey, but you get a lot for your money, and with the Tandy model continuing to climb in value, it's a pretty good deal. Aesthetics, 3 out of 5. It's pretty bland, but it's not offensive. Software, 2 out of 5. There's really not that much available for this system, but the Tandy 100 community still adamantly supports it to this day. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Make sure to like this video and subscribe. Let me know if you've ever used this system or the Tandy 100 in the comments down below. If you'd like to discuss your favorite portable computers with other nerds, make sure to join our Discord server. And of course, if you'd like to help keep this show running so we can show off more niche, interesting computers just like this one, you can support us on Patreon. And I'll see you guys next time.